Hi, I wanted to talk about our off-grid solar that we've set up here in New Zealand. Um, we've got a family of six and we moved to off-grid around Christmas time, so we've been on it for about seven months now. And I just wanted to talk about how I set it up and how it's working for us. We've got four 305 watt panels. I just went for the cheap panels. Um, I think the Chinese, you know, non-brand sort of panels, monocrystalline, I think. Uh, they seem to work really well, roughly 1,200 watts. I've seen them producing up to 1,400 watts here in New Zealand on our charge controller. So I'm really happy with these panels. Definitely would buy them again. I could do with some more panels. Uh, that'll be our next upgrade. Uh, we've certainly got the capacity to take it, and it would make it a little better. But even with the panels that we've got here, it's midwinter now, we'll still be charged today by 10 or 11 o'clock, we'll be on float. So happy with that. Um, they're running in two strings, they're 45 volts each, so they're two strings of 90 volts going into the charge controller, and that is, seems to be what works best. Uh, keep the voltage as high as what we could, and yeah, then in low sunlight we're still getting some charge out of them. The racking for them, if you just swing around here, Pat, just to show, I just built it out of some pipe and some box section, and built it so it can tilt, uh, but I have never tilted them up. As you can see at the moment, mid-winter and they're still too flat, I should bring them up higher. It'd be interesting to do a test and just see what the difference would be. It, it still seems to produce okay. We can get it on a good sunny day. We can still get five kilowatt hours in the middle of winter. So that part of it doesn't seem to be a problem. It's when it's low sun that we struggle and could do with either more panels or and or tilting them the right direction. The wiring for it, I used some of the just standard uh, cables off eBay with the what are they called MC4 connectors already on them and that clipped in not a problem and I only had two of those and the other one I put the connectors on and it says it's 4.58 millimeter squared wire and I just put the clips on and clipped that in both cables seem to work fine I don't think it makes any difference I was worried about how heavy they are, but then the cables and the actual panels themselves are not that heavy. So I think the 4.8 is heavier than what's on the panels when you get them. So that's about all I can say about that. I'll show you guys the battery box, which is here. I built it out of insulated panel that I was given from a friend. Um, happy with the box. I was worried about them freezing. Last year I had a light hooked up on a temperature switch when I wasn't here, uh, but it hasn't been a problem. This winter it's been very mild and it's nowhere close to freezing. Just put this up. So we've got two strings of the T105s at 48 volts, so two strings of eight batteries. Um, happy with the T105s, I only had to put water in them about twice over the year or so that they've been set up like this. Um, I've got one of these disconnects here so I can disconnect one string if need be. I don't know why I put that in really because you'd never use it but still good to be able to isolate things I guess. Be interesting to hear what people's thoughts are on these. Um, just bought that off eBay and seems to work fine but just whether they've had any problems with them. These Battery cables I just made up myself. Uh, had an electrician friend I could use his crimping tool, so I just crimped them all up myself and put the heat shrink on them. And then got these little rubber caps here off of eBay, and they fitted perfectly on the end. They were cheap. I'm happy with those. It just means it's covered. Um, yeah, that's about all I can say about those. I, I don't believe you need to check the water as often as some people say. I check it about once every month or two, and it doesn't seem to be a problem. I just 
ran through the wall a bit of water pipe and then put the cables through that so they don't rub on the tin of that. Um, that's about all about that. I'll grab that camera pad and I'll take it around. So around here we've got the uh, a little shed that I built to put the generator in. It's not in there at the moment. I've got it away doing some welding. But it sits in there. Um, I built a little double plug to plug into the generator because it only has 16 amp outlets yet the generator draws the inverter when it clicks on to charge draws a lot more than that off it then it, it clicks off so that's what I've done as a temporary measure put two plugs on the end of the cable but it's not ideal I burnt out another plug so I need to do something a bit better there and uh, maybe rewire the generator with bigger resets or bigger plugs or something um, <clears throat> in here we've got the Outback Flexmax 80 I think it is um, this is where the wires from the solar so just the positive comes through this reset just again just a cheap eBay one be interested to hear what people think of that and then I mounted it on the back of this tin just so if something shorted out or whatever we don't have a fire uh, so then it goes into the charge controller what's it doing at the moment I'll try and hold that still sorry about the poor video um, yes yeah, so it's coming in 53 volts 400 watts we've done 0.2 kilowatt hours so it's early in the morning still and that'll crank into that shortly I've got another this is an old inverter that I bought off eBay used for a start on 24 volt until I made the change to 48 I was quite happy with it, it worked really well but yeah we decided to go 48 volt and I managed to get uh, cheaply a Magnum Pure Sign it's a 43-48 inverter um, really happy with that the only thing it doesn't sync well with the generator it's probably more the generator's fault and I've had to play with the hertz of the generator to make it work I uh, put a hertz meter on the generator and just turned the revs down until it came down to 50 hertz I think it is and then it seems to click on most times it still doesn't click in every time sometimes you've got to shut it all, shut the generator back down leave it a minute and fire it up again so I'm not quite sure why that is um, I've got a reset here where it goes in to the to the batteries or the batteries come into here it's a hundred hundred amp sorry about that it just won't focus yeah 100 amp just be interested to hear what people think about that as well if you've got any comments here just put it in the comment section below um, yeah so that's basically what our system is the wiring's a bit untidy meaning to get around to doing that but like a lot of things you don't quite get around to it but yeah welcome your comments and yeah um, I'll put some other videos on about our 12 volt system we use for our lights and what we're drawing off it. Cheers.